Hello, I'm Sam Lackey, a research associate with the SIMS Initiatives, a digital humanities project here at the University of South Carolina Libraries, founded in part with a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we are reading one of SIMS's ghost stories throughout the month of October. This story is called Grayling, or Murder Will Out, and it's a part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam and the Cabin. At the point in the story where we last left off, Joel Sparkman has been questioning the strangers sharing their campfire about his activities during the recently concluded Revolutionary War. The Inquisition continues now in part five of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, or Murder Will Out. Sparkman's examination of the stranger concluded with an inquiry, which in the plain dealing regions of the South and Southwest is not unfrequently put first. And what might be your name, stranger? McNabb was the ready response, Sandy McNabb. Well, Mr. McNabb, I see that my sister's got supper ready for us, so we might as well fall to upon the hoe cake and bacon. Sparkman rose while speaking and led the way to the spot near the wagon where Mrs. Grayling had spread the feast. We're pretty nigh onto the main road here, but I reckon there's no great danger now. Besides, Jim Grayling keeps watch for us, and he's got two as good eyes in his head as any scout in the country and a rifle that, after you once know how it shoots, t'would do your heart good to hear its crack, if so be that t'wantin' your heart that he drawed sight on. He's a prodigious fine shot, and is ready to shoot and fight as if he had a natural call in that way. Shall we wait for him before we eat? demanded McNabb anxiously. By no sort of reason, stranger, answered Sparkman. He'll watch for us while we're eating, and after that, I'll change shoes with him. So fall to, and don't mind what's a-coming. Sparkman had just broken the hoe cake when a distant whistle was heard. Ha! That's the lad now, he exclaimed, rising to his feet. He's on trail. He's got a sight of an enemy fire, I reckon. T'won't be unreasonable, friend McNabb, to get our weapons in readiness. And so speaking, Sparkman bid his sister get into the wagon, where the little Lucy had already placed herself, while he threw open the pan of his rifle and turned the priming over with his finger. McNabb, meanwhile, had taken from his holsters, which he had before been sitting upon, a pair of horsemen's pistols, richly mounted with figures in silver. These were large and long and had evidently seen service. Unlike his companion, his proceedings occasioned no comment. What he did seemed a matter of habit, of which he himself was scarcely conscious. Having looked at his priming, he laid the instruments beside him without a word and resumed the bit of hoe cake which he had just before received from Sparkman. Meanwhile, the signal whistle, supposed to come from James Grayling, was repeated. Silence ensued then for a brief space, which Sparkman employed in perambulating the grounds immediately contiguous. At length, just as he had returned to the fire, the sound of a horse's feet was heard, and a sharp, quick hello from Grayling informed his uncle that all was right. The youth made his appearance a moment after, accompanied by a stranger on horseback, a tall, fine-looking young man with a keen, flashing eye and a voice whose lively, clear tones, as he was heard approaching, sounded cheerily like those of a trumpet after victory. James Grayling kept along on foot beside the newcomer, and his hearty laugh and free, glib, garrulous tones betrayed to his uncle long ere he drew nigh enough to declare the fact that he had met unexpectedly with a friend, or at least an old acquaintance. Why, who have you got there, James? Was the demand of Sparkman as he dropped the butt of his rifle upon the ground. Why, who do you think, Uncle? Who but Major Spencer, our own Major? You don't say so, what? Well, Lionel Spencer, for certain. Lord bless you, Major, who'd have thought to see you in these parts, and just mounted too for all nature as if the war was to be fouled over again. Well, I'm real glad to see you. I am. That's certain. And I'm very glad to see you, Sparkman, said the other, as he alighted from his steed and yielded his hand to the cordial grasp of the other. Well, I knows that, Major, without you saying it. This has been part five of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, or Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this ghostly tale. If you would like to read the full text of the story or any of the many other works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative website at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, happy Halloween.